today we're jumping right on into a pretty trippy VJ loop that's a bit more of a cylinder type object. We're gonna mess around with some emitters flying right by the camera. And then we're gonna touch it up with a little bit of jitter and a little composition effect. So stay tuned and let's just go ahead and dive right on in. So diving straight on in, first things first, let's go ahead and delete our default objects. Now let's run on over to our scene setups so we don't miss out on this. Let's go ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections. Then we're also gonna run over here to the preferences tab and to just make sure everyone's set up on the same page and within your F curves, your default interpolation, if it's set on Bezier, you're gonna switch that over to linear. This way we can get a smooth animation and it'll loop perfectly. So once we have that set up here, we're gonna jump right on over to the cylinder modeling. Now we're gonna go ahead and press shift A for all those people that uh, are coming in fresh and new here. Shift A, press R to rotate, press X to align on the X axis, then press 90 so we can rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Now press N. This is gonna open up a bit more about the information on your object. If you don't wanna press N and you're running out of screen space, you can go over there and press this yellow uh, tab where you can see the same exact information, I believe. Don't quote me, but Let's focus on this tab first and foremost. Now your Z, you're gonna switch it to eight meters. This way we can have some, some synergy here with the mathematics. Press G then Y on the object to grab it, hold control to pull it. And you'll, when you hold control, you'll be pulling it exactly on a one meter by one meter basis. If you don't wanna do this, feel free to go over here, peek what my stats are here, and you can just copy that to match the location. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start messing around with some modeling and we're gonna dive straight on in. So press tab to enter edit mode. Come over here, activate your faces, click that face and the other face, and then press X. Delete just the faces, like I said. Okay. Now what we're gonna do here is from here, let's go ahead and duplicate by pressing shift D cylinder and press S scale it a little bit in you can hold shift to make sure it's really really subtle we're essentially we're just making another cylinder inside of here and what you're gonna do now is on the y-axis you're gonna shrink it down we want to shrink it to get really tiny Okay, now just gonna move it on over. Now, if you're looking to figure out how to move, if you're coming in that new, if you press your middle mouse button, you can just like kind of drag and move around here. Now, what I like to do is we're gonna go ahead and come over to our modifiers tab here for this little cylinder. And we're gonna make it a wireframe. So we'll give it a little bit of a, like a, a tasty kind of uh, playful modeling experience here. Then what you're gonna do if you hold tilde, hit left, zoom out a little bit, shift D, hold on the y-axis, press shift R a few times to duplicate it. See what I just did was I made a few cylinders inside of our, our uh, fun loop, one would say. Now that you have that, what we're going to do here is now we have our pretty much our default set of models that we need to start this. What you're going to do now is we're going to essentially make this kind of like loop. Now, what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and rename a few things. Let's call this default cylinder. And then the rest we can just leave this one to be for project 11. Let's select all of them. Let's go ahead and create a new collection. Let's call it loop. Okay. Okay. 
What we're gonna do with our loop. We're gonna leave that as it is for right now. You can right click and change it to whatever color you want. We're gonna mess around with some of the modeling here in order to make sure that everything is working well. So let's go into material preview just for right now. Let's open up uh, not a horizontal but a vertical split. Then let's open up our shader editor. Right now we're just gonna model the default cylinder. So got this bad boy. I'm gonna up the metallic a bit. Our roughness, we're gonna add color ramp. And we're gonna go ahead and add a musgrave texture. And then for those who don't have the Node Wrangler add-on, go over to Preferences, go to Add-ons, and you can go ahead and type in Node Wrangler, and you'll see Node Wrangler. From here, you're gonna go ahead and press Control T, connect the object to the vector, and we get this interesting kind of like reflection going on here. I'm just gonna play with this and make this 4D. Pull this, make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, up the scale, let's just up the scale a little bit. Let's go ahead and add in our camera right now. I'm sure most of you are like, what's going on? Once you add in the camera, let's view camera. So we can just see what we're looking at here. I'm gonna go ahead and play with this for now. And now we have our cylinder kind of set up here in terms of what we need to see. Let's go ahead and start playing with those lights. Let's add some lights into it. Now, click new. We're gonna switch this over to mission. Surface. Um, let's do color ramp. Connect the color ramp to the mission. Uh, noise texture. And from noise texture, we're going to put in an object info. And we're going to connect that to random. Then once we connect that to random, let's go ahead and pull in some colors. So let's make this five. And let's go ahead and make this 4D. And let's switch this to ease. Switch this color to, let's do a blue like I had. Blue and nice little green. And then let's go ahead and do something called linking. So what you're gonna do is select all your cylinders and select this one last. Uh, press, oops, press Control L, Link Materials. You can see now we have a bit of this like ring, these rings going on here. And then you're wondering, okay, Micah, now how does it animate? If you swipe on down with the W, you can see it's moving now. <coughs> Let's get a little more in the camera frame. Let's pull out on our perspective. So depth of field just for now. It's a little bit of some tips and tricks for you. Let's turn off depth of field for now, actually. Let's go back to our cylinders. You can see. You can see how it's kind of like animating here. And if you want to control the colors a little bit better, if you scroll one over, you get more green. I believe the closer you have it, when you do it, it'll animate. You have two different colors. I personally would like to have a little more vibrant of some colors. So let's, let's bring in, let's just have the, hmm. 
The red's a little tough on the eyes, in my opinion. You don't want it to be too tough on people's eyes when you're making this stuff. Now, to animate it. Start on frame zero in your, your trusty, dusty timeline. And let's keyframe RW. Let's go all the way to the end, 250. Now, I'm gonna show you. The faster you want it to be, the higher the value of the W. If you want it to be really fast and really trippy, there you go. If you want it to be a little more subtle, I'm gonna go ahead and make it around like 2.5, something where it just won't be like intense. But now you can see it's like easing on through. And feel free to play around with the color ramp. If you mess with it, you can see like you're gonna get different effects here. It could be a little more subtle. It could be a little more uh, like intense. It's really up to you. So now what we're gonna do, let's animate the camera moving on through this as well. So for all my friends, let's go back to 3D viewport. Now the camera, if you watch any of my other tutorials, it's pretty much the same like always. You're gonna keyframe on Y0, go to the last frame, go eight, insert that keyframe. Now if you see here, now we're moving on through. It's getting interesting, huh? Well, let's just go right back into our default cylinder here to make sure that we have a lot of our things set up properly. So the base color, we can make it darker. So now you have this bit of a darker base color. But I also like to mess around with it. It's a keyframe with the Musgrave and the W as well. Make this one like two as well. Answer that. Looks like we're running into a bit of an issue here. I think the camera is, where is it stopping? Oh, uh, that's fine actually. You can see now we have this bit of like a, a tunnel and things are moving through it. Now, there's a reason why we went ahead and made a collection for the loop. And that reason is for it to loop. So if you press shift A here, collection instance. Wait, let's make sure our camera is not in that collection. Loop, moving on down. Shift D. Move it on down, I'm hitting control R two times. And if you click this. Now we got a bit of a loop here. Now the interesting thing about these loops, because of the the lights flickering and flashing, you can never get the exact thing. But the fact that it's so sporadic, most people won't even notice if they're in the crowd here. So like if it ends right there. And it starts like there. It's just like they'll be more used to the sporadic kind of like all those things going on, you know? So I don't I don't really like how wild, how fast the Musgrave texture is moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and change mine a little bit. Okay. Cool. We got the first half of this kind of done now. We have this animation. Now what we need to do is add the little emission particles flowing on through. Let's go back to our 3D viewport. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and cut open another little section here for our shader. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and duplicate the default cylinder. Bring it on in a little bit. Okay, duplicated it. Let's call this the emitter. And we're gonna kill this material. Then what we're gonna do, click 
click our particle setting properties, press plus, and you'll see here, I'm gonna do a few things to make sure that we get some uh, balls jumping around. Don't quote me on that. What we're gonna do with lifetime, 999, frame start, negative one and zero. And then you can see it's gonna fall. We need to turn off all the gravity here. Let's go over to sources, volume, uh, random order, even distribution is fine. It's, a lot of those things are up by taste at that point. Physics, mass, zero, uh, or you can just put none actually. <laughs> and I think that actually fixes a lot of things for us. You just have no physics at all. So there's no point at changing the gravity or anything like that. Viewport display, disable showing the emitter. Rendered, don't show the emitter either. Uh, you can play around with scale, but I don't think that changes anything for right now. Now you can see we have these things floating on through our environment within our emitter. What we need to do next, got a viewport uh, render. And um, let's go ahead, actually, catch myself. One thing you're noticing here is, okay, Micah, his balls just keep hitting the camera. We need to clean that up. And the way we can clean that up is add the modifier sub uh, solidify, bring it on top. And what we're gonna do is go back in our particle settings, source, make sure it uses the modifier stack then what you'll see here is when you play around with the solidify you can bring it in closer and what's happening if you look in the wireframe we're solidifying the entire thing we're leaving a little bit of a space so if you up the thickness bring it down bring it close we want it to be close but not too close now right about there i think is okay 0 0.48 now you're like okay <laughs> this looks all right but like where's the real What's the real effect, Micah? Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and bring in an object. Um, let's bring in a little uh, UV sphere, bring it up. This is gonna be our emitter object. It's gonna be the little glowing ball that we want. Bring it down, shrink it. And let's go ahead and make sure that the sphere is in our regular collection. Call it emitter object for the material. We're gonna grab our material that glows. Go back over to our emitter now here. In the particle settings, within render, you're gonna have it render as an object. Instance object will be your emitter object. You click that see we have the lights going through and if you want it to be a little bigger scale up I like the particles to be kind of small and you can see we have these little particles on floating on through now now the last step, well not the last step, but one thing you could also do here to make it match what I had in my thing, we can rotate the camera. So super simple, it's up to you. Press zero, go to the last frame, 360 degrees, insert, and you can see the camera now rotates. Now, if you're like, oh man, the camera's moving way too fast, you can mess with the focal length. And it'll start to slow down, but personally, looking back at it all, let's go ahead and just not mess with that. Rotation, the single keyframe. Delete that keyframe, we don't want it. Uh oh.
now I think we're getting somewhere now so let's go ahead and cut in some depth of field and I think the default depth of field settings will be fine for now it's set to 10 you can kind of see the little particles when they float on by they kind of just get a little more blurry it gets a little more interesting but this is pretty much the whole render here kind of see if you're wondering how I did that it's control plus spacebar and you have your little loop effect so for everyone wanting to shoot this out now go ahead over here to your little printer icon make sure the file type is mpeg video if you're looking to make it an mp4 go mpeg4 uh, perpetually lossless is fine and you select where you want the file to go and then from there you click render animation and it's all said and done so thanks again for watching and feel free to jump into the discord um if you have any questions or anything like that but like i said uh i'll see you around